So I think some of the most important traits for a leader to develop are things like integrity, uh, empathy, and really the, the passion uh, and genuine interest in developing your team. Uh, you know, taking it from an integrity perspective, starting there, you need to build trust and respect, and building that trust and respect obviously allows the team to be bought into the strategy and the vision of the company. It allows them to execute flawlessly around the goals that you set, and really building that trust and, and uh, focus is foundational. Then on the empathy side, us leaders cannot ever assume that our teams are thinking the way that we're thinking. And we need to ensure that uh, there is diverse thinking on the team. So, you know, whether that's how we're thinking of hiring, there's different skill sets for each job, and making sure that we have empathy and knowing that we want that diverse thinking on the team. We want people to come with their diverse thoughts uh, to drive innovation and to also be able to uh, drive thought leadership and really build a community. Right on. Um, so you are a, a very senior leader inside of your organization. Um, revenue, no big deal. <laughs> so in light of your leadership journey and current role, what is the most important piece of advice that you would give to your younger self? I think I would give to my younger self, uh, be curious. Mm -hmm. We in this industry are so lucky to be surrounded by such interesting and uh, smart people and to use that and to talk to those people and build those relationships. And by being curious, that means asking questions. Um, and really speaking up. So uh, being able to sit in a conference room and, and being shy, don't doubt yourself. Ask that question, raise your hand, uh, and really lean into building a community at a young age. Build that board of advisors because it will continue to take you through the rest of your career. And even now as a leader, I think being curious is now about staying curious as a leader, right? And continuing to show curiosity uh, in my meetings so that I can lead by example from our team, but then also be able to um, help drive innovation and thought leadership. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we are surrounded by such interesting people in this industry. You know, having relentless curiosity in the people that you meet and the conversations that you have feels like uh, it lends itself naturally to the role that you have. Absolutely. And uh, I also think, too, it's a small industry. So yeah. when I think about the people that I met in my younger self and where they are all now, it's totally. um, incredible to see uh, everyone's success. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. Um, and I will say, just having been in this industry for a while, I think maybe like you, rising with my sort of fellow women totally. um, who are just absolute badass leaders now. It's just, it, it fills my heart with joy. I couldn't agree more. It's uh, <laughs> always trying to find the time to get together as women <laughs> leaders and have those really honest conversations about uh, what we're going through as mothers, as friends, as family members, and really how we're bringing our whole self to work. Totally. Um, so what are your thoughts on the proverbial glass ceiling and how do you advise women to break through it? So I definitely think it is cracked, that is for sure. I am proud to say at IAS it is more than cracked as we have a female CEO, we have a female CFO, we have a female CHRO, and we have a female majority board. Uh, so including myself as CRO, it is such an incredible uh, culture and atmosphere to work in with regards to thinking about a glass ceiling that is, is broken. Um, and I do think that we have a ton of work to do, right? So um, I'm sitting in a unique position. Mm -hmm. uh, with that said, I'm being able to take all of those learnings of, of being in a female majority uh, leadership company and help explore what I've learned and what's working with the community. And I think more than anything, we need to continue to support each other. And that doesn't just mean, you know, taking someone's phone call or grabbing coffee for networking, but really helping the younger generation understand the tips and tricks of how to do it. I get asked all the time, how do you do it? And being a mother and a CRO and prioritization and they want to know how it's done they want to know the true tips and tricks of it and I think there's something to be said about that is real support is where you're in a vulnerable place and really sharing with somebody else how you think that they can succeed how does how, what does the atmosphere feel like in in such a strongly female-led organization as compared with maybe you know places you've experienced in the past yeah, it's a really interesting question. I think there is um, definitely an incredible sense of uh, understanding, uh -huh. um, and that understanding comes from a few different ways. You know, whether it's personal understanding, but also professional, um, and knowing really that we've all got each other's back as males and females. And uh, it really has been eye-opening being there for the past three years, just seeing the community that we've built across 
the entire leadership team and then and then down. Uh, I have many people on the team, again, both genders, really explaining that they couldn't be more proud to work for such uh, an incredible leadership team on both sides of the fence from a male and female perspective.